الحمد لله الحمد لله كثيرا والله أكبر وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ما صام صائم وأفطر الله أكبر ما هلل المسلم وكبر الله أكبر ما قرأ المسلم القرآن وتدبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم I bear witness there is no deity save Allah and that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger and his mercy to all mankind. We pray to him to shower his mercy and his blessings upon all the prophets and upon, and upon our prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon all of them. Dear brothers and sisters, Eid Mubarak to all of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ They rejoice in the bounty provided by Allah. Chapter 3, verse 170. Today is the day of rejoice, the day of celebration. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reminded Muslims, in spite of the harsh and challenging conditions they might be in, but when there is the Eid, we should rejoice and we should celebrate. And in spite of the harsh reality that we are all experiencing, the world is experiencing, yet we are reminded by our Prophet وسلم, and by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rejoice and to celebrate. And inshallah, we will. Dear brothers and sisters, we are here on this earth for a purpose. We are reminded by Islam that we are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connect with him. We are here to be the stewardship of the earth, which is al-khilafah, and also to build it and to develop it, which is al-imara. And for us to succeed in this journey in fulfilling these, this mission, Allah has enjoined upon us acts of worship, the prayers, the fasting, the Fridays, stops, and acts of worship that they're supposed to help us, empower us, and keep us moving forward towards success in this life and the hereafter. And Ramadan, it's one of those major stops yearly where we come together, and I won't go through the list because we have been reminded throughout the month of Ramadan what is all about. But you could be rest assured that every act of worship except the Hajj is in the month of Ramadan. So the month of Ramadan encapsulated in this crash course so many acts of worship from the prayers, the Taraweeh, from reading the Quran to charity and all in between them and while we all know that the month of ramadan the goals and the fruits are so many i would like to focus on two that i believe these are the utmost importance the first one brothers and sisters is as the quran reminds us Qad aflaha man zakkaha. we're talking about the inner self the human self and Allah is telling us to a state of success, those who purify it. We are reminded in the Quran that this nafs, this inner personality, this inner self, it, is, it has the both contradiction. It has the moral failing on one side and it has the righteousness on the other side. God consciousness and righteousness and goodness on the other side. And this polarity is what we struggle with throughout 
life and throughout the year. So as the year goes by, let us face it, we are a human being. We make, we make mistakes. We sin. We slip. Mishaps, shortcomings, bad habits, they all compile and whether we like it or not, they will impact our faith, our spirituality, and our character. So Ramadan comes with all the acts of worship that are in it to shake and to remind us, number one is the hope. It, it is the reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as was promised to us that Allah will shed these sins and will help us if we are sincere, will help us to clarify, uh, will help us to purify us from the load of the year. So Ramadan comes and shake that nafs, that inner personality and helps it to purify and help us and helps it to reform so this way it can get back on the road and on, on its journey fulfilling its mission. So the first one is Taskiyatun Nafs, which is Ramadan has done that for us. And inshallah, that's why we feel much lighter and much more at peace toward the end of Ramadan because the Lord starts getting off slowly. So that is the first one. The second one, brothers and sisters, is to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Hadith Al-Qudsi, the Prophet ﷺ told us, was narrated in the Bukhari, that the servant keep getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he and she does what, is, what has been enjoined upon them and when we go the extra mile, when we do the extra and we do, and we do that in Ramadan. We did that in Ramadan and we do that in Ramadan year after year. That you keep on doing the extra acts of worship until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touches you with his love. So nothing can be more rewarding than feeling that we are closer to Allah. Ishud waqtarib. Prostrate and come closer to Allah. Ulaika al muqarrabun, Those one who are closer to Allah. So this is the month of Ramadan. It is the month of the human purification as well as the month of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi li wakum. Ud'u'ullah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله وبحمده بكرة وأصيلا دي brothers and sisters in Islam as it's been tradition for our institution that the second is dedicated for our young leaders Nonetheless, what goes for them, it goes for all of us, because a lot of us still believe that we are still young, as they say, the young in the heart. And what I chose for us today, brothers and sisters, I chose for us some headlines and some articles that they caught my attention in the last couple of months, and I believe they are extremely important for the reasons that I will share with you. The first article, it was posted in Newsweek, a mainstream magazine, March 17. And this is what the article says. Can the power of prayer alone stop a pandemic like the coronavirus? A question mark. Even the Prophet Muhammad thought otherwise. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a headline <coughs> at a time where our nation and the world was going through the pandemic, anxiety and fear. Yet, non-Muslims in mainstream is talking about our Prophet Muhammad. And what the article, I hope you could access it and read it. I will summarize it. What the article is talking about, number one, they mentioned that famous Dr. Fauci and the Gupta from CNN, how they are advocating a good practice or hygiene and as well as isolation, uh, the, the quarantine things that we all uh, are quite familiar with the, the lockdown that we, 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 we have experienced. And then what the article said, this was the recommendation of the Prophet of Islam 1400 years ago. He put 1300, I corrected it, it's 1400 and some years ago. And we all know that the Prophet there are plenty of hadith about washing your hands before food and after food, 
uh, the wudu when you get up in the morning you wash your hands and so on and so forth plethora of hadith and then you will find about he would say if you have a virus if you have something that is contagious isolate yourself if you if there's a pandemic in a city the people of the city should not leave i don't know how people of new york they were leaving the, 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 it says the recommendation is you shouldn't leave and if you're going to a city that have pandemic don't go in in the article also was saying is that how the prophet of islam reconciled between faith and between reason and he gave and they put the story that was narrated by Tirmidhi that when the Prophet ﷺ was at the mosque somebody came in with a camel he didn't tie it and the Prophet ﷺ why did you tie it go and tie it he said I faith in God Allah. he said tie it and then put your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a mainstream is and the shining star and actually the shining moon the shining sun is our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and millions of people are reading it believe me this is better than any other things that we can we could have done the second thing it was in the huffington post not too long ago and this is what it says muslim doctors fight COVID 19 and islamophobia on the front lines as i said in huffington post and it is a long article to show that Muslims are in the front line fighting the war against this pandemic and citing the first four, we call them marchers, the first four who died in England were the four Muslim doctors. And then the article, which millions of people have read, is talking about how in New York you have 10% of the doctors are Muslims. I want to remind us we're only 1% of the population. That means we are 10% times more our contribution, 10 times more our contribution toward that fight. It says 5 million patients in New York alone are being visited by Muslim, I, I've been treated by Muslim doctors. It says $4 billion in, in wages annually by these doctors. In Michigan, it is 15%. And then they give examples of doctors. The one that caught my attention is Dr. Uzma Sayyid. She's a wife and mother of two. She was putting 16 hours a day and between three hospitals and between the clinic. And they mentioned to say that and she, in spite of the 16 hours, she always up to date with the latest research that's happening on this pandemic. And then, which is, I love the most, and, and, the, and the article cites, she's a proud of her American Muslim identity. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Brother, sister, last but not least, another headline. Uh, also, I, it caught my eyes not too long ago, coronavirus. Who is this Moroccan-born doctor leading Trump warp speed vaccine hunt? And then another headline, U.S. President Donald Trump has named a Muslim American. His name is Munsef Muhammad, Munsef Muhammad Salawi to, he, to, to head a fast track program about the COVID-19. And I like to quote our president, Mr. Trump, saying about this doctor, one of the most respected men in the world in the production and really on the formulation of vaccines. These brothers and sisters, our young leaders, this is only a few articles that I picked for today and be assured there are so many more. We can see our contribution to America and to the world can no longer be ignored. Muslims are becoming the shining stars in the sky of our nation and in the sky of the world. And if you are to think, brothers and sisters, what do we have? What this ummah has that is providing and producing such shining stars? Let's not go that far. If I am to look at the month of Ramadan and we have all and you have graduated from this month, what have you graduated with? What we all have been graduated with? Number one is a stronger faith. Number two is we are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you look at the certificate, what are the qualities that it's written on the certificate? Those are the people of self-control, of discipline, of sacrifice, of perseverance, of generosity, or of and or and of empathy. 
This to list only a few that is on our certificate when you and I and all of us graduated from the month of Ramadan. And this is not just once in a lifetime. This is happens yearly where our qualities are polished and reformed are strengthened. Our young leaders, stand tall. Be proud of, of your faith because such qualities are the qualities of nothing but the best of the best. And let me tell you, not only that our nation is in need of people like you, but the world is in need of people like you. And let me remind myself and remind you and all those who are listening, brothers and sisters, these, this is what Islam advocates and this is what Islam inculcates in us and we should be proud and we should celebrate and we should rejoice. The young leaders of today, I call upon you, with these qualities, you will lead us today to a better tomorrow, inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters of the community now, my message is to you. On the behalf of the leadership of this institution, I want to thank you again and again from the bottom of our hearts for your generosity, for your commitment to this institution, for you believing in us and you believe in its leadership. I am sure you agree with me and you heard it over and over. We are so thankful to God Almighty to have such a team that has able to, biv to pivot in such pandemic, in such dire circumstances, and to get us online in such an effective way. And God bless them. And God bless you for believing in us. I just wanted to leave you with this thought. Eid has been another opportunity for us to add to our budget. And normally we raise around $30,000. So please keep that tradition going. Let open your heart, open your checking book or your credit card, and keep that tradition going. Eid Mubarak. Wassalamu alaikum. God bless you all.